Hi, I'm Mark Logan. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking spoon in. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Just taking some photographs of spoons. Um, if you've kind of watched the uh, cutlery shoot that we've done in the past, where we were looking at uh, uh, kind of how to shoot it and basically add reflections in. We talked about stacking images as well. We'll do a film on that for you to show you how it works as well. Um, but basically we want to kind of follow it up with a little bit more kind of creativity. In, in the previous film, what we did was basically looked at the point of view. So that's actually from kind of the waist level looking into the product. And then we also looked at the flat lay, which you can see on screen now, in fact. What we're looking to do is now add a little bit more kind of lifestyle kitchen-esque kind of imagery to it and things really so you know within here obviously straight away um, if I do the likes of you know how how do you make things more creative I've got no idea but the one thing I can do is take a black and white image of it all right so uh, fingers crossed it comes through straight away with a little bit of finesse in and blah 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 we've got a different image than we had before however really what we're looking to do in the kind of the uh, detail or a little bit more of an artsy image. I think the, the copper and the green is absolutely fantastic in colour. So I'm going back to colour anyway. Just switching my focus on to get my focus. There we go, switch it off again. And now perhaps I start to actually trim off the likes of the base of the spoons so we get a little bit of an image. Let's rotate it round uh, to actually kind of square those off more, a little bit more. And you can see how these kind of images could en end up on social, me uh, social media with an ice cream company for your own kind of photography. Whilst we're there, we may as well actually do some kind of real fun things as well. If you've watched us do some kind of product gift photography, then I can just go in and uh, change some kind of elements within the image. As long as my camera doesn't move, I can kind of go in and stack these as well. The only negativity to do with um, reflective surfaces is basically they're never always going to be in the, per uh, the perfect place uh, as far as the kind of the light and the quality is concerned. The one thing to really remember is to, if um, you need to add more pop to an image, um, then look at the likes of a reflective card from above in this, in this case, uh, to just go ahead and add the, ov uh, the overall kind of reflective element but you can see there if we stack those quickly into the likes of a gif we'd have a lovely move a movable image of these uh, spoons moving around the page as well i want to take this to another level okay so um we're gonna kind of first first of all remove uh, the gray card uh, the green card even yeah and um we're gonna start to look at some kind of layout design um where we're going to add in some spice or some elements to actually just make it a little bit more kind of of a, a, a creative shot. Let's um, turn the spice towards the light. So first of all, we might not even photograph on this tabletop. The first thing I want to see is actually the tabletop or what it's like. Let's at least do the, com uh, the composition. So it's not bad, um, but perhaps we should do it on a colored card. Um, or we should do it on, uh, we've got an old door here. Let's kind of have a look at the door perhaps, but we're, we're pretty close. What's the difference though? If we kept this light in the same place, if we just rotated these around, is there a difference in the shot? Um, I would say before you go to all the stress in putting uh, the likes of the different spices in place, at least get your composition right to begin with so you know what you're going to work towards. So you can see straight away, just by turning those pieces of cutlery towards the light source now, so the handle towards the light, reflecting back towards light, we've got that lovely kind of sheen and shine uh, on, on the actual uh, spoon as well within things really. So let's work with that kind of design. I, I actually don't mind it as is in fact. Uh, so let's go with a simple kind of star, a starting point here. I think we should add some more space above, so up this end. Let's focus again. Um, rem remember how I work, it basically I'm waiting for it to beep in the focus point. Um, and by beeping then it's basically a sharp, 
then I switch the focus off. I think that's pretty good. Let's, let's start here with just a little bit of the kind of the spice control before we actually start to bring in a different background. So um, I usually make these little funnels um, when we're pour, pouring in the likes of spice, yeah? Foil's good because you can just lip up at the end. You can do it in pa a paper, but foil is good. Try and pleat together here. Then you kind of pour in your um, spice or whatever it is on the one end. And then basically you can just kind of really joggle it out and things. Obviously, if you just need a little bit, you just kind of close it up then with the foil and just actually not spill all over the place. Uh, but <laughs> even with one of these things, it can spill all over the place. So uh, you can see that kind of couple of quick shots that we did there. Uh, we did, uh, first of all, onto the kind of almost black wall, a walnut-y kind of color table, studio ta uh, table, looked pretty good. Adding in those colors, and as I showed you, kind of just putting it in via the funnels and things, really. Then we've added in the card, just to actually add a little bit more kind of dimension to it. Uh, remember, we're moving or adding in reflective card so we can kind of paint the different kind of looks and feels in into it. This will have a totally different look and feel. Let me just move stuff out of the way a minute. Um, but if I gently... See what that's like. So if I gently turn that round, you're going to see how the spice isn't going to get as much colour now um, because it's against the light. All right, that was one of the reasons that we set the spoons up pointing in the opposite direction first. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't add in some reflective light. Obviously, just the likes of a reflector, whether it's on a bend or whether it's um, handheld, it's really down to you. Um, it, it's all about kind of just adding in that little bit of specularity, that kind of bringing it alive. So you can see how that kind of changed straight away. Um, but again, just think about the compositions that you're going to try and think about first. Even draw them out on a piece of paper, a paper so you know how to wor work it. Right, uh, I think we're going to bring in the door. Um, I rang up my mate and I said, um, you got any peeling wood? Um, Tidber around, and uh, he does hoard a bit, yeah, so uh, he said, oh, funny enough, Mark, he said, I'm taking down the shed on the weekend. I went, can I have the doors, or can I at least see the photographs of the doors first? So, uh, hence, he basically showed me the doors, and I went, I'll have them. So, I'm just going to move these, where's the best place for them? I'm just going to stick them up at the top for a minute. In fact, what I'll do is I'll leave them on the card. It's probably the easiest place for me for a minute while I bring on the door. Um, but yeah, I stole both, uh, both his doors. Um, and they're just real great kind of props. Let me just bring it in. Um, it's, it's a really great prop, isn't it? I, I mean, honestly, he gave it to me. I didn't really steal it, all right? But uh, I'm loving all this kind of textury blue and the kind of the peeling. And, you know, otherwise, you've got to get outside and basically leave stuff, paint it, rub it down, wire brush it, and everything else with it, and leave it for six months to start to actually peel and things. So these are the kind of things that if you can get them and keep them and store, store them, they make kind of great backdrops. Also, on the other side, we've got the natural wood door. So this is great if we're using it as a backdrop as well. So it's not only something to photograph down onto, but it's also photographing as far as a backdrop is concerned. Uh, okay, uh, I need one of you to just pick, pick this up for me a minute, just with my back, if you don't mind. Supergirl Honor, thank you. Uh, we'll shove that in, I think, on. Hang on a minute. If you don't want any lumps in your spices, then sieve them before you put them into the funnel, yeah? Could you slide that up for me? It's all right. Oh. Which part's good? Yeah, it's really good in there. Let's get them up there then. Yeah. 
It's the wrong way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have a quick test. Honor was saying we should do them crossing over. I absolutely agree. That's quite nice though. No, Where's my straight, eh? Hey? Yeah, I think if we just come up just a little bit and if we push this down a touch, push those up a touch, yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. Straighten that off as well. Which way? Uh, this end down. Do it again. So just before we, just trying to get them square. Pretty good. Move that one across, I think. Move that one. It's a little bit tighter. Um, you can see how we've got that great colour because all the light is coming onto the colour because of the spoon bevel is throwing it back. Yes, yeah, pretty good. Right, let's have a little play around, shall we, with the uh, crossing, over, uh, crossing over. Um, backgrounds. Um, I would definitely encourage you to think about um, the kind of the stylization. Obviously, when you kind of begin to specialise more and more and more into one sub subject, uh, you tend to actually collect a different kind of props. Um, and as a food photographer, I would say one of the things that you're collecting all the time is backgrounds, is surfaces to photograph down on and to. You're, all, you're obviously going to have your go-to. Uh, your go you're also going to have different kind of backdrops that uh, basically work for specific clients. So for uh, instance, my son, uh, Chris, who's a Michelin star chef, every time I photograph him with him for the past 18 months now, or all he wants is a slight sil a silver reflective board, and we do the POV shot, a 45, I should say. There are some images we do a POV, but otherwise most of it is actually being done in 45 and a, a flat lay to actually get the images. Remember, the image on screen here is technically a flat lay because we're shooting down from above. Um, but, uh, yeah, pretty good, I think. Oh, thank you, Ant. Uh, let's see what it's like. Yeah, fingerprints in there as well. Um, I think we'd have some more pepper corns as well because I think I dropped most of them on the floor. I think they need to be a little bit more. Yeah, I couldn't quite remember what we did. Yeah. I don't know, it just feels a bit. I like it. I think the, you're right, the peppercorn one though. I think we should spill some as well on the. Quick look. That's great. Composition's brill. Spill some? No. Yeah. Spill the green. I think the green had a great colour. And, and I suppose the yellow on the blue is going to look good as well, isn't it? Nice, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's uh, just flag off some of this bottom, I think. So the spoon edge is not going to, front end is going to get as much and see how much it kills the colour. That's better. Yeah.
Yeah, I was just looking at the, uh, if we're looking at the image on screen for a minute, you can see by putting that um, uh, polystyrene re uh, triangle, it just snapped off uh, the kind of poly boards um, a couple of weeks ago, didn't it, Brandon? Anyway, uh, but it's become a prop now and it's also become a, a, a deflector. It's amazing the things that we use. I think that's pretty good, you know. Um, I'm looking at a big screen television, but really obviously analyzing color as actually on the monitor. Everything's gonna be raw and then actually pro processed through. I think it looks great. Do you like that? I love it, yeah. I wonder if we should add just a little bit more. You know the gap just at the top here? Do you think that's where the bay leaf should go? Yeah, or should they be down here? I like the spot. This is a very sellable image. Very, very sellable image. And the likes of stock, and it's basically social media. If you're kind of doing a little bit of a foodie blog and everything else yourself and things ready, this is a, a kind of a quick. And, and remember, even though we are doing it here, I'm looking for my iPhone. iPhone's over, over there. Do you grab the LED a minute? I got my little one here a minute, Brent. Yeah, I got my little one. Ooh, 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 let me just take off my orange gel. It's just, um, so this is it with just the iPhone. Remember, this is a daylight. If the win window's there, it's gonna do the same job for us. But in the same way, look what the small little LED uh, is doing. Can you hold that in for me just to run about there? Again. Lower down a little bit. Great, thanks. Um, it's a good simple image, isn't it? You know, just with the, L uh, the LED. But when you're using a spoon and you're using spice, think about how the angle of the, the, the texture, in other words, is going to need to actually really be brightened up. So the easiest thing for us to do is allow it to be pointed just towards that light just a little bit more. Is that okay, Bran? Yeah, but you kind of get the, uh, the idea on that is just pretty much LED and obviously it could be just by a window in the same way. Um, but if you find, find yourself doing a lot of these kind of images, um, get, get creative. We don't always have to use the, the flash. Let's just uh, focus down. Oh, should I should have gone back up first. Focus. And then off. Let's double check it. Nice job on. Really good. And I suppose then it's just if we want to add a little bit of uh, light somewhere, it's going to be a little bit blue compared to the white light, but you can see already that what it's doing, yeah? Um, it should bring up a little bit of highlight just on the uh, edges a little bit more. if we start to lower the ambient light down in the room, so in other words, if I just switch this ambient light off here, uh, can you kill me a bit of ambient in here, please? So obviously, um, pretty much as is, this is the shot and it's all through flash, all right? So we, we're kind of used to that anyway. If we then kind of just switch the flash off on the remote, yeah, I obviously need to have an exposure now on what this is going to be. So I need to know what to meter it as. Let's grab my meter. I'm in a bit of chaos here today. So I need to just meter um, for the ambient light, light source. Um, I tend to work on a set aperture. So technically I'm aperture priority. I want F4. So that is um, quarter of a second, 100 ISO. So if now I just go around the other side, if I can see what I'm doing, shutter speed, quarter of a second. OK. 
Okay, let's do the shot. So remember, this is just the LED light itself. And this is just a kind of cheap inspection light um, that you kind of get at a normal kind of garage and everything else with it. So you can see already the different kind of look and feel to an image by just having very, very small light sources. And we can even obviously kind of do it from above, but this is going to be need a longer exposure. So, uh, you know, I just don't want you to think that you have to have all the flash kind of technology in the sun uh, to be able to actually create some really great food images. All right, so uh, yeah, really nice shot that. And uh, as I said, you know, that's a very sellable or usable image anyway kind of thing with it. So uh, that's a real good introduction into kind of getting going with some kind of simple setup shots in the likes of food photography. Just don't tell your partner that you've raided the kitchen spice drawer and when they go looking for it, basically they're going, oh, I don't know what you're on about. Oh, no, I don't like spice. Yeah, just plead ignorance has always been my method or nip down to the local uh, cheapy kind of food shop and kind of just buy up all the out, out, out of date spices and everything else. Um, if you find that you've got a bit of lumpiness with a spice because it got a bit too moist, then sieve it beforehand into a different bowl, put it back into the funnel and then just go from there.